So nice to have everyone here this morning and to have you join. Uh, this is our Mind the Moments Tuesday morning gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. This is a place where we invite experienced mindfulness instructors to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. I'm Suzanne Rowe Palacino, and I am so happy to be here with Rebecca Wing, licensed clinical therapist, as well as instructor with Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. So nice to see you this morning, Rebecca. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you all. Nice. So nice to have you here. It seems like it's been a while. So welcome back. Thank you. Here we are in spring and it's beautiful. Buds and greenness all around. So it's a very special time. And yeah. I thought, thought today, Suzanne wanted me to figure out a question for this morning. And since spring is all about sort of um, becoming, uh, I thought the question today would be a good one of uh, around the body. We'll be talking about the body this morning. What makes attending to your body so difficult? So give us some thought and, and come up with, for your experience, what makes attending to your body difficult? All right. And just as a few reminders, as you th think about that question, um, we will, um, you know, ask the question and you can just type in the chat. Um, then afterwards, uh, Rebecca will share some thoughts with us and just lead us in a 12 minute guided practice. And then after that, we'll have time for some questions. So if you can go to the bottom of your screen and open up that chat, um, and you'll notice in the chat, you can click the blue drop down menu that says host and panelists. You can change that to everyone. And then as you uh, answer that question, you can uh, share your thoughts with the rest of the group. So I will share that question that Rebecca's just mentioned. What makes attending to your body so difficult? I think one of the things as you're all sort of thinking about that, there's this one wisdom that is unavoidably true that uh, we don't give much thought to, which is uh, the only thing that's going to be with you every single moment of your life from the day you were born until the day you pass is your body. It's the only thing, right? Other people come and go, events come and go, things that you own come and go. But this reality of the fact that you have this, this sort of a, a being <laughs> accompanying you through life uh, and how important it would be to consider the, the importance of learning how to attend to it because it's with us beginning to end. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, very interesting inquiry. Yeah. So what makes attending to your body so difficult? I like Bridget's one, lack of energy. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, the lack of energy being that I, I don't want to feel my body necessarily because it feels so exhausted that it's hard to, to be with it. Sometimes people I work with being a therapist, I specialize with adults who have ADHD and anxiety. And um, they talk so much about not wanting to be in their body because they feel too uh, edgy, too, too much adrenaline. And even that, the opposite of obviously of lack of energy being that I don't like feeling uncomfortable in my body because of that buzziness or that edginess that I feel. So it can be any form of energy that we, we just don't really want to face or be with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other part is that, that, you know, physical pain, sometimes we don't want to have that. So we'll grab the Advil or whatever, because we just don't really want to face and be with the discomfort of the body, which is understandable because it's not pleasant. But all of these pieces, you know, in meditation practice, we're learning how to be with, attend with curiosity, uh, sort of a gentle awareness that allows us over time to really become familiar with the body in a different way, absent uh, storytelling about it, uh, making assumptions about it, comparing or judging uh, our own body. And it's an in internal experience, literally from the inside when we meditate with the body. Yeah. So that's a good. Uh, I'm reading um, the Ray's comment. Yeah, it's a good one. 
it's attending to mind is usually attending to external factors the desires and emotional impacts keeps the mind searching outwardly yeah yeah in the sense that we're even if we feel something in the body we're going to immediately project outward into the future or the past uh uh yes uh thoughts are very seductive <laughs> so we go there instead yeah yeah i um you know i i i'm finding i'm i have a little bit of a a different twist on the question because i feel like right now i've been attending to my body a lot more lately and I'm not really finding it difficult although I have um aches and pains you know just in you know before I stretch and you know things that hadn't been there when I was in my 20s you know so but I feel like I have a a little way a way to handle those things so I've been much more connected to my body um of late so beautiful yeah yeah and, and that's what, you know, the neuroscience is very clear about this, that if we're able to drop into the body with mindful awareness, it, it allows the body to regulate itself uh, and in a sense, um, operate with less uh, difficulty. Not that we're not going to have discomfort, of course, but that that self-regulation simply through attending, being with, uh, is uh, sort of like uh, pulling from the, the wisdom of the body, because the body is always attending to itself. It's always perceiving internally the external world. And so we learn from that internal attending to really be able to drop into present moment awareness in a fundamental way. So I think what I'd like to do this morning with the meditation is a, it's a form of body scan um, it's going to be a shortened version, of course, 12 minutes, but, um, what I'd like to suggest, uh, we're going to start from the feet. And if you're interested in exploring this in depth, you might even want to consider taking your shoes off because I think a lot of times we tend to, uh, put things on our feet during the winter. And so here we are coming into summer and maybe we can feel our feet on the floor. Of course, if your floor is cold, that might be okay. Cause it gives you a little more sensation. <laughs> So find a posture that you can sit in that allows you to really gather yourself in the chair <clears throat> and really feeling yourself have a sort of a nice rising spine. Allowing your ears to balance and float backwards over the shoulders a little bit. And just a slight dip of the chin so that you can feel the spine from the base of the pelvis all the way up to the top of the head, aligning, not over efforting, but just softly rising. And then noticing the chair beneath you, the sensation of the chair and the body where it connects. And then allow the awareness to settle at the feet. And we're gonna start first by noticing the toes. Very seldom do we really attend to the toes. The big toe oftentimes is the easiest one to sense. So get curious about the sensations of the big toes. Any sense of tingling or coolness, warmth. Sometimes there can be a numbness or absence of sensation. And really narrowing the awareness right down into those two big toes. The next toe is a little trickier. The second toe, sometimes I have to do just a little movement to see, okay, yeah, there, there they are. And see if you can really, again, focus right into any form of sensation in the second toes. But 
third and fourth toes, even more of a challenge because of course they're sort of dependent on each other. But you may sense a temperature difference, slight sense of sensation. And then the pinky toes, of course. Oh, how much we rely on these toes for our balance, our walking. And then sensing the balls of the feet, exploring the quality of sensation there with an open curiosity. may be more aware of how they're connected to the floor, a sense of the internal experience of the balls of the feet. And then moving to the arches of the feet. This is an interior experience, but you may also notice that there's maybe a little space between the floor and you, or the sense of the rise within your shoes of the arch. And then the heels, same quality of exploration. Inviting the awareness now to flow up into the calves. Really allow the attention to feel the difference in each calf. Sometimes they don't feel the same. Any quality of tingling, temperature, sense of tightness or ease. And see if you can allow those calf muscles to simply rest. Moving the awareness now to the back of the thighs, the, the part of the legs that are now connected specifically to the chair you may feel a sense of pressure, an awareness of perhaps some tightness. Sometimes we may not even notice there's a little burning sensation there. So we just notice how my hamstrings, what am I noticing about them in this moment? And sense where the legs there connect to the pelvis. Again, we can sense a letting go quality of the back of the leg and the base of the pelvis where they're connected. While also making room for and noticing any discomfort, just simply aware. Noticing the top of the thighs now. Again, exploring the quality of warmth, circulation, sensation or absence of sensation in the thighs. And how they connect into the top of the pelvis, a sense of that connectivity. Noticing now the lower back. Sometimes when we sit, we don't even notice that the back may be needing a little adjustment.
or sense of fatigue or tiredness, achiness. Or maybe there's a warmth there this morning. Opening your awareness to the hands as they rest. The elbows and the shoulders. Notice if the upper body has fallen forward and explore a little lift of the chest just to check on the posture, allowing the arms to rest on the frame of the body. Noticing the upper back now, that space between the shoulder blades. And then allowing the awareness to flow into the back of the neck. Exploring the quality of allowing the neck to be soft and receptive, elongated, lifted, gently balancing the head. Noticing the jaw we can imagine and allow the tongue to float in the mouth, encouraging the jaw to release a little more. Noticing the forehead and around the eyes, I can soften and settle the muscles of my face a little bit, even if there's a little achiness in the head, I can make room for that too. Simply allowing gentle awareness. Now explore what it might be like to sense the body as a single system, extending your awareness from the base of the feet to the top of the head and resting awareness in attending to the body all at once. The moment the mind wanders and you notice is the moment that you can return back to the interior realm of the body, finding refuge in the wisdom of the body.
Just a few more moments of resting now, just resting. So as we end the practice, take your time. It can be helpful to draw a deeper breath back into the body, moving the hands and feet. Certainly a nice stretch would be a good thing first thing in the morning as we end our meditation. Thank you so much, Rebecca. You're welcome. You know, there's a there's a saying in the Buddhist tradition about um, taking refuge in the wisdom body. And for years, I thought that meant a body of knowledge. Mm. And not until recently did I read a different interpretation of that. And in fact, the teachers of a thousand or more years ago meant, no, take refuge within the wisdom of your own body. And it really struck me <clears throat> as a therapist, you know, I'm always trying to help people learn how to self-regulate, but ultimately it's not just about regulating, it's simply about attending and letting the body regulate itself, which is astoundingly simple if you get out of the way. <laughs> so when you attend to the feet and suddenly like the feet are, like there's a wisdom in the feet, you notice and you feel the calves and the thighs. And the more you do these kinds of practices, the more you begin to trust, oh, if all I have to do is just drop into my body, it's going to, in a sense, regulate itself simply by me attending to my to it itself. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's I I really love the way you've the that phrase. I think it um it, it offers a, a simple release mm. that, you know, when you mentioned your, your thoughts get pulled away and then you can find the refuge by, by coming back. Um, and that term refuge just, you know, it's like, okay, there is a, a place I can go, you know? <laughs> yes. I had a client th just the other day say, it makes me feel less lonely. And it's like, yeah, because you have this accompanying being it's with you all the time that you can always, uh, you know, seek comfort and refuge in. And I think that ultimately, as a lot of folks, you know, noticed this morning with their responses, somehow we almost feel it's not safe in there. But the, the fact of the matter is the more you practice relaxing and settling and attending and being with, even if it's uncomfortable, the more the body thanks you by settling and, and giving you that place of rest. Yeah, I, I can see in my own in my own life how I can when I do focus on the body, just on your, the point of your earlier in the question, um, I've had an easier time doing that in the last couple of years. But of late, when health ups and downs happen, sometimes you're like, oh, you, people can think, oh, well how, why has my body failed me? You know, like have those kinds of feelings of, hmm, I thought I could rely on my body. And then all of a sudden this part is not cooperating, you know? <laughs> yeah. And how and, do you deal with those kinds of feelings? Right. And, you know, I think the thing that's very interesting about that is that uh, you can explore where in the body do I feel okay? Uh, it's very interesting, you know, a lot of times, of course, when we're feeling discomfort, we really hyper focus on that area. But mm -hmm. when you start to explore, well, actually, my feet feel fine. And bringing your attendant attention to the, the other areas in the body that actually are, are okay, it allows the awareness to extend beyond uh, the, the, the hyper focus on the discomfort. And, and that and I totally hear what you're saying, Suzanne, that's the quality of, you know, I thought I could, uh, you know, rely on this body because the reality is uh, there is no escape from old age, sickness, and death. No escape. 
And so how and in what way we work with that awareness and that acceptance of the reality of that, the, the better it is that we become recognizing, well, you know, I'm sorry you're suffering. I'm, I'm uh, you know, bringing compassion to the suffering of the body, being with it, attending to it the same way we would with someone who is sick, who we love, you know, that same attending gentleness uh, so that when we're feeling dis dismay and, and confusion, we can drop into compassionate self-awareness. Uh, I, I had an experience with cancer years ago, and I remember going through these periods of time where I was just sort of saying to my body, I'm so sorry you're having to go through this, like literally speaking to my body as a dear friend uh, and, and letting my body know that I was attending in there with, with it, you know, mm -hmm. as it was going through this struggle. Right. Yes. And, and the difficulty, but then the feeling of freedom when you can send that positive energy to even something that is in your body that's growing that you don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, but knowing, you know, saying things like, okay, it's time to go. Um, you know, I understand like this, it's okay. It's time to go. Those kinds of things that can, um, be positive and at the same time move things on the way you want things to move. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this yeah. would be a good time in the spring because springtime we tend to feel sort of unbounded energy around us as the as the flowers and the grass and the trees are all budding out and the green becomes just so technicolor in, in so many ways to really get more and more uh, connected to that in a physical way, like feeling the internal spring. Uh, as the weather warms and the sun strengthens to get outside and walk or sit uh, and be with nature as, as many and as often as you times as you can, because that will continue to nurture and bring attentiveness to not only the internal realm, but also its relationship to the external, right? Which in, in springtime can be very dynamic. So, yeah, that's so lovely that you've brought that in. I love that because, I mean, I guess we can connect nature, what's going on in nature, like, okay, this tree looks like it's might be dying, but then we know that there are other trees help, you know, so you can bring in community and support and you can, you can make so many connections with nature that that's, that's just a lovely connection. I have a dear friend who, who's an avid barefoot walker and and he's always reminding me this time of year, take your shoes off, take your socks off and go walk around the lawn a little bit. And it really is amazing. You begin to realize, oh, there's like a, a whole nother realm of experience there with my feet, feeling the grass underneath my feet after being encased in shoes and socks all winter long. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, there's another teacher, Roberval, um, on our webinar is also the same, um, has the same passion about that. And I've been meaning to try it and I need to, need to give that a try. <laughs> our, 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 our wimpy little wimpy pussy feet that can't do anything, you know, it's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, okay, it's time to, to explore and let, let your feet feel all, all feel all the feels. <laughs> Well, thank you, Rebecca. This has been wonderful, wonderful practice for everyone. And just um, it's lovely to start from your feet and go and go up versus the, the traditional way. Yeah, uh, my, my pleasure to be with you all today and, and happy spring. And may you continue to find refuge in the wisdom of your body. Yes. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful subject. Thank you for joining. And um, we'll see you again soon, Rebecca. And thank you to everyone for joining. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.